Okay, now we are ready for step two of our African landscape with silhouette and analogous colors. So in step one, we painted our background, sunset or sunrise, whichever you want it to be. Um, you can turn it. At this point, you'll decide, do you want it as a, a sunset or a sunrise? Um, and that is our background. So remember, the in, uh, background is the area behind um, our main subject. And we really want to try to avoid, this is a student work where um, maybe they didn't blend their colors as well. Try to avoid, you know, perfect striped sections. Really want um, those uh, analogous colors, any three colors next to each other in the color wheel, but we're using warm analogous colors. Um, we want them to overlap so that it actually looks like a realistic sky and not these perfectly striped stripes okay um, all right so we have that complete in watercolor so now you're gonna want to check out the Google slide um, for different animals um, in the Google slide we talk about um, animals that you see in Africa and how um, the trees in Africa are different um, from some of the trees you might see here in North America um, I want you to incorporate definitely one tree um, probably not more than one, and then you could do either one animal or two. I don't want five animals and six trees. It'll get too busy. So um, I usually recommend one tree and one animal, or if you, if you really are needing more of a balance, maybe you made your tree too small, you want to incorporate a second animal, that's fine. Um, that's also explained in your Google slide, so be sure you're checking out the Google slide for those instructions. Also, a silhouette is an image of an object that is outlined and then filled in solid black. So as you are designing, that's our next step, is sketching our um, foreground, which is our trees and our animals. Um, we don't need to worry about putting in a bunch of details. We're just outlining the animal and outlining the tree. We're not drawing the eyes. If you're, if you're choosing a zebra, you're not drawing the stripes. Um, a silhouette is an object outlined and then filled in solid black, usually with a lighter background. So that's why we used um, with some lighter colors. Also, watercolors tend to be a little bit more transparent. They're a little bit lighter um, than if we were to use acrylic or um, temper paint in the background. So watercolors for our background, but for our silhouettes, we are gonna be using temper paint or acrylic paint to fill in our silhouette. So you will need um, either acrylic or tempera um, to fill in. So we want it to be nice and solid. If we were to use black watercolor, it would just be more transparent. Um, so we really want a nice solid silhouette of those animals and tree. All right, so follow along as I first sketch. So make sure you have a pencil and an eraser. Um, as you sketch your ground line, your tree and your animal, um, and then I'll demonstrate how to fill it in as a silhouette. Um, for this painting, you might want a variety of little bit smaller brushes because um, you get into some finer details depending on what animal you chose. So make sure you have a variety of maybe some um, finer paint brushes so that you can um, get a nice clean outline. All right, here we go. All right, step one, you are going to sketch lightly your ground line. Your ground line is gonna be about an inch to two inches from the bottom of your paper. And it can be a straight line or it can have a little bit um, of a hill to it if you would like. Um, some students have even put sort of a cliff at one end, but just it's up to you on your landscape design. After you have your ground line drawn, then you're going to decide where you want your tree. Um, remember, you're referencing the African trees. Remember, they don't look the same as our um, trees here in the United States. We're not drawing, um, you know, that elementary school tree of a, a tree trunk and then like a big cloud puff on top. Um, it's almost more like an umbrella. So you have all these curvy branches and then the foliage just sits on the top of those branches. Um, so I'm sketching lightly. Remember, we want to sketch lightly so we can easily erase. Um, it's a little bit tricky to erase on the already painted background, so you really don't want to press hard at all. Um, you're going to decide if you want your tree sort of to the side, depending on what animal or animals you're doing. Um, so think about your layout. You're going to put. Are you going to do two animals? Um, are the animals going to one is going to be on one side of the tree and the other is going to be on the other? So just sort of think that through before you um, start drawing your tree. Do you want your tree smack in the middle of your paper? Um, your landscape is your design, but just sort of think
think it through wanting to utilize the space of your paper. I have had students um, struggle before with making their tree too small and then it ends up looking like a bush in comparison to um, the size of their animals. So make your tree large. It should almost go to the top of your paper. So the, the tree should be um, almost hitting the top edge of your paper. We want it nice and tall so that um, you're in proportion with the size of your animals. All right, so I've sketched that in with the foliage on top and now you're deciding what animals you want or animal. You can do one or you can do two. We're not looking to do five though. We wanna keep it pretty simple. Um, I'm going to draw two giraffes. So I'm gonna start with, again, I'm thinking about my layout. So I'm gonna do one. I wanna fill the space of my landscape, but I also don't want the tree and the two, two animals off to one side and then nothing on the other side. So really think about balance as you are planning your design. Drawing animals is not easy, so notice that I'm having to erase and make corrections constantly throughout this process. So it's really helpful if you are referencing your animal handout and your um, sketch all at the same time. Um, again, trying to make your animals look as accurate as possible. All right, once you are happy with your tree, your ground line, and your one or two animal sketches, then you're ready to move on to the next step, which is beginning the silhouette using black paint. And again, you can use acrylic paint or um, temper paint, whatever you have on hand. And you're gonna start with, you can see here, you're gonna start with outlining um, your ground line. So I'm following the ground line. I'm using a relatively small brush. So I'm following my pencil line. And after I've outlined, then I'm going to fill in the ground solid black. Because remember, this is a silhouette. So we're not painting on details. I'm not putting grass and other things in my ground. Everything is just solid black. So now I'm going to fill in the ground solid black. Um, you might want to switch to a larger paintbrush for large sections. Um, and then you'll notice as I go on to outline my tree, I move back to my smaller, more fine paintbrush. Um, in my ground, I'm, my brush strokes are going in again one smooth direction. Um, so be consistent. We want it to be nice and neat. So one smooth direction across going side to side. You may have to do two coats. You'll see here um, in a little bit, I'm going to do a second coat. You want your silhouette to be nice and solid and clean. As I begin to outline my tree with black paint. Notice that I flip my paper upside down. That's so that my hand doesn't rest in my wet paint. So um, totally fine if you need to flip your paper a different direction. Sometimes flipping your paper upside down gives you a different perspective on your composition. Um, it helps you to see things differently. Um, it can really help you uh, create a more balanced um, overall artwork. So I'm filling in um, my branches, so I'm not only just outlining them, but after I outline them, I'm filling them in solid. Now I'm um, painting in that foliage that sits on top of my African tree. And after I finish my tree, I'm gonna go in and maybe do a second coat, or I might let that dry work on my animals for a little bit and then come back to it. Again, I'm flipping my paper upside down. I'm outlining my animals with black and then filling it in nice and solid. If you're not getting a nice clean edge um, with your paintbrush, that means that your bristles of your paintbrush are too dry and you need to dip them in water or get more paint. So remember we want a nice clean edge. If they're getting feathery, um, dip it in water or dip it in some more paint so that um, your bristles um, stay um, tighter and gives you a cleaner line. Now I'm going in and I'm just doing a second coat wherever I can see through my paint, um, where maybe it got a little thin, touching up areas. Remember, neatness is always um, a portion of your grade, so go in and clean things up, make it look nice and neat and clean and crisp. And I hope you enjoyed working with watercolors and acrylic paint um, as you painted your African silhouette landscape with analogous colors.